Praise the Lord. This morning we continue our series on God's vision for our life. And we uh, have gone through uh, the saying of our Lord Jesus Christ when he confirmed the prophecy uh, concerning his ministry in Isaiah 61. And in Luke 4, um, the scriptures tell us that uh, on that day when Jesus come into the synagogue, and people give him the scroll, and when he opened up, it's, it's right at um, uh, Isaiah 61. It says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So preach the good news. And we see that Jesus begins to unveil, and he said that um, today, the very scripture that you just heard, it has been fulfilled. In that scripture, we see that Jesus revealed to us the heart of God. Um, when mankind have fallen into sin and have come short the glory of God, there's many things missing in life. And so Jesus come and anointed by God, by the Holy Spirit, come to restore everything for us. He wants us to be saved. He wants us to be healed be set free. They want us to be uh, in the place that we can be equipped to serve. And He empower us so we can go out and do the work of the ministry. So we see that God wants to restore our life to the fullness. And that's the vision of God for our life. We have go through, we have been saved. He, he wants us uh, to be set free. He wants us to be disciples. And uh, today, we want to look at God's um, vision for my life is that I'm equipped for ministry. The scripture that we will base our study on uh, today is on Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 12. We should open with me to um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 12. But let me add in uh, verse 8. Therefore he say, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Verse 11 and 12. And he himself gave some to be apostle, some prophet, some evangelist, and some pastor and teacher for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edified of the body of Christ. We see here that Jesus is the one who gives gifts to men. We know that the gift that God has given to us, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ gives it to us, is so we can um, be equipped so we can do the work of the ministry. God calling each and every one of us um, into the work of the ministry. Not everyone called into full-time vocation, but every one of us is called to be a minister, a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what God vision for our life, as he wants us to use the gift, the ability that he gave it to us so we can serve the church and serve mankind. The Bible uh, tells us here that the pastor are the administer and the people are the minister. And this is what uh, VBC Houston, we believe on. We believe that the, the pastor, the minister um, in the house, uh, full-time minister, vocational minister, we are the place who train to equip uh, the believer, everyone in the church, to do the work of the ministry. So according to the Word of God here, my job as a pastor is not to do the work of the ministry, but to equip the people of God, equip the church to do the work of the ministry. And it's very important for us to go back to the scriptures so we can see this clearly. And it's very important for us to see this because for so long, churches, we um, focus on the minister as someone on the stage he's, um, you know, under the high line, the spotlight, 
And everything is going on is depend on the pastor. And the congregation is for a long time sit in the pews watching the, the pastor uh, do the work, the ministry on the stage and pray for him or her to be ministered elsewhere during the Sunday um, when we come together in the house of God. And that is the reason why the church cannot grow because we go upside down in the plan of God, the purpose of God. The purpose of God is a God-given we noted here some uh, apostle, some prophet, some evangelist, and some pastor and teacher uh, in order to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Who do the work of the ministry? The saints, the people of God. And when we get this correct, you say that now it's just not one person working, but everybody is working. And we see that um, the, the body will be benefit. And everything in the church, in the family, we see it is functioning well, just like a well oil machine. It's working. Each one takes place um, in the gifting and the ability that God gives it to us. And so equipping the same is very important. To me, that is very important things that I, I need to uh, step in and work in uh, to the success of equipping the people of God to do the work of ministry. And praise God that um, everywhere I go, when I step into this place as a trainer, as a teacher, we see that uh, many people have been raised up. And here at VBC, we uh, want you to be well equipped so you can step up and do the work of the ministry. That is our purpose, and that is why our attention. And my prayer for you is uh, today that you will look at this message and say the Word of God tells us uh, a lot of things concern be equipped and step into the work of the ministry. So you can step up and say, I'm the minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not just a, a church member. I'm not just uh, a Christian, an unknown uh, no talented uh, kind of people, but you will recognize that God equipped you with a lot of things for you to be success in your life and in the work of the ministry. Uh, there's two results when you're able to discover your ministry, the place that God has uh, created you for, and the work that God has ordained and uh, prepare for you beforehand. When you're able to step into that, there's two things powerful happen into your life is you will see fruit of your life. You will see that um, uh, people will do the work just like you do. And um, it's, it's a, not a wonderful thing is you feel fulfilled. There is something satisfying from the inside. You feel like, wow, that's a, a, a good reward that I'm looking for in life, and now I can see it. I see, I see the fruit in my life. Um, at VBC here, we focus on individual approach of ministry uh, instead of institutional approach. Two very different ways. Institutional approach. The churches, they have a list of hundreds of things that they want to accomplish. They go on looking for volunteer and fill those places. Um, so basically, the people are the resource to come and fulfill the place, uh, the church, the ministry that uh, uh, the people want to run. But here at VBC, we believe on God bringing in people, and we focus the ministry based on the giftedness, the ability that God grace. Uh, people in the church. And that's a very different approach. You see, that, for example, yesterday, we have a spring cleaning. Um, if you hear yesterday, you see that there's, there's group, there's team that divide the work according to their ability. And um, some you can see that when uh, Pastor Michael give them the assignment, 
they just took off and run. Some of them even have tools in their vehicle because that's their cup of tea. When they're able to get to the task, they do it quickly. Nobody has to supervise them because that's their, their heart, their ability, and they're able to do that uh, wonderfully. Another thing, picture that you see that is yesterday, we um, in the process of calling people to help us um, to help us in this uh, spring cleaning. We uh, discovered uh, two men in, uh, uh, recently come to VBC Houston. They're not a believer yet, but they have the ability. One is uh, working in the air conditioning um, uh, industry. And uh, he come yesterday, help out, and he said, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm very good at um, working on uh, AC. Uh, let me get to, uh, um, to, to the roof to see what needs to be maintained. Uh, when he told to um, one of our brothers, he's so happy he came and said, Pastor, we, we discovered there is a brother here that he uh, worked on uh, AC and he volunteered to uh, help us look at our uh, air conditioning. We say, wow, that's, that's good. Another brother uh, he, he come because his uh, mother-in-law uh, looking for the church to fellowship and go here. And as he, um, he wants uh, his mother-in-law uh, were diagnosed with leukemia and uh, came and we pray for her. And now it's reduced to nothing because they said they misdiagnosed or something, but um, they cannot find it anymore. So he's very blessed about it. And uh, we find out that he worked for Reliant Energy. And he said he, he wanted to come. And whatever concern about electricity, he had the ability to do that. We see, y yesterday I talked to Pastor Michael and said, that's an amazing thing that uh, God always at work. He knows what we need and he has the people in place uh, as he wants us to move forward. And that is the, the experience that I have since 1983 when I planned the church. Every time we need something, God already brings people in place. And that's a, a wonderful thing, and, and I'm so blessed yesterday driving home and thinking, man, there's some time that I, uh, people say things and, and do things that I feel like this church is, is, um, is, is the heavy burden of the church is on my shoulder because I'm the senior pastor of the church. But yesterday, it so reminded me that God, the Holy Spirit, is a true pastor of the church, and Jesus is a great shepherd. I'm just an under-shepherd, happened to be here, but God used me to plan this church and to equip people to work in the work of the ministry to further the kingdom of God, and so all can be benefited. Did you see the picture? God bless us. And he, he, he call you. He bring you from different walk of life. He got you saved, bring you here. And he said, I want you to be involved in this work that I have set aside for this family called VBC Houston. What an honor that God uh, cherry pick us, bring us from different places in our life and bring us in for the vision that he wants us to accomplish in this city of Houston and the, around the world. We praise God for a wonderful thing that God planned for our life. And this morning, we uh, begin to look at a couple of questions and find a way for us to discover uh, the work of the ministry that God wants to equip us for. First, we ask, what does the Bible say about ministry? There's a Greek word for ministry is dikonos. That word means a servant. Someone walking and kick up dust when he served the people. That's the word dikonos. And in English, we have the translation called deacon. Now, deacon of many churches nowadays is, have been... Uh, deform. They, they become some deacon board now. It's just like the boss of the church uh, is t 
totally opposite from the original meaning of that word. Deacon means servant, people who serve, people who are willing to tend the table, the people who uh, minister to other people by serving them. And here, based on that definition, we believe here at VBC Houston, ministry is using whatever God given me to serve Him and the needs of others. Let me say it again. Ministry is using whatever God has given me to serve Him and the people. It's very important for us to remember that as member of VBC Houston. When we talk about finding your ministry, we're saying that uh, what God has given me. Remember the question that I, I, I remind you uh, last year that we need to ask for our life. One of the five questions is, why am I here on this planet Earth? And what can I give to mankind? When you ask the question, you dig deep inside of you and say, oh, I have ability, I have, I have certain gift that I, I receive when I get saved. And I can give, I can bring my contribution into this planet Earth to mankind because God has equipped me so I can serve people and make a difference in this life. It's very important for us to remember that. Those who find out their purpose in life, those who know their ministry, they wake up every morning motivated and ready to Come out of bed and get ready to serve, to make a difference in this life. It's very important. Those who don't know, they're not even sure why they have to wake up. That's why they roll around the bed under the blanket, especially like this morning. Uh, we have probably the last uh, blast of uh, cold air from uh, the north. And um, yesterday is tragic change uh, from our uh, weather. But it's it's a, it's a day that many people will say, mm, I don't know that I, I should get out of bed because it's, it's so cozy and comfortable under this blanket. But those of us who wake up, shower, and get ready because we know our purpose, we have to gather to the house of God to serve Him by worship Him. We come here because uh, there is people need uh, your ministry, our ministry. They come here and get ready to serve people. We come here to uh, get the, the building ready. The coffee needs to be made. And uh, some of us on our way have been assigned by the church that so we stop by and get some donuts, some clergy. So um, uh, after the English service, we will have some uh, refreshment and a time that we can stand around and, and catch up with each other and fellowship. You see that it's just like a, a, a wonderful machine that is working because we know our purpose. Now, for those of you who have to have your fix in, uh, in the morning with coffee, you noted that when uh, the brother, uh, brother Min, the one who makes coffee for the church, if he's out of town, you see that you're missing something. Or for those of you who get to the coffee pot a little too late, you see, it's rented out because somebody else uh, replaced been taking care of that. It's, it's, it's not used to with the work because uh, they don't know how much coffee they need to make. But men know exactly how many because he do is um, for us every Sunday. You see that when, when your ministry is, is, is fired out, when you really step into the work of ministry, when you're missing, uh, when you're not there, people feel missed because you are not there. You are not in the place. And you see that there's something missing. And very important that all of us step into the place that when we minister, everything is go well, but missing us, something is missing. And it's important for us to remember that. The second thing is we minister in three uh, directions. 
Our first direction is we minister to the Lord. We come to worship Him. We come to pray because God needs our voice. He needs somebody on earth ask Him to intervene, interfere into the work of this blended earth, in this city, in this community. So He, he needs us to come to not only to worship but pray so God can have the legal right to move into somebody, move into our community and make a difference. He wants to bless them. He wants to draw them into the kingdom of God. But he needs somebody ask so he can have the legal right because God interferes nothing in this planet earth except answer prayer. So we minister to the Lord when we talk about ministry. And the second direction is we minister to other believers. It's important for us to remember this. Jesus gives gift to men. That means I'm the gift that Jesus gives to you. And you are the gift that Jesus gives to the church and for everyone in this place. And it's important for us to see that. Do not you know, feel like I'm, I'm a nobody and have nothing to give. No, wait, wait, wait. God gives gifts to men, and each and every one of us is a gift that God gives to the body of Christ. Because without us, there's something missing. Without our contribution, without our ministry, the body of Christ suffer because we rob somebody of their blessing. Let's envision something that uh, I want to make this point across. Um, let's say all of us happen to be in McDonald's. And there's a man who comes there and order his order. His number called, he step up and bring the order. And as he walked, a large size Coke on his tray flipped. And coke is splashed everywhere on the floor. Let's see how is the gift that God gives to us function. The one who so-called prophet stand there and say, I told you if you're not careful, you will spill things in the floor. The teacher will step in and say, next time when you carry the tray, and you have a big um, a coat, you put in the middle of the tray. If not, you put on the side and make sure that you have at least two fingers. Hold on to that drink. That's a teacher gift. And those who gave the gift of service, you jump right off your chair and you go and you grab some napkin, you bend down and you try to help that man, that poor thing, uh, clean the floor. Those who have the gift of mercy come and tap on his shoulder and say, it's okay, it's okay, just a drink. And those who have the gift of gift, you step in and say, let me pay for your meal. Get another Coke, get another drink, get another hamburger. You see, each one have different gifts. In a given situation, we can step in and bring our contribution. And that's how God Equip us for the work, the ministry, and for the body of Christ. So remember, very important. Now, each one that I have been described is, is, uh, is functioning exactly the way that they wire. God created them in that way. In a given situation, each one react, each one step in in a different way. The work of ministry in the church is the same thing. We minister to God. You see a wonderful group up here this morning, the worship team, the praise team, and the, uh, the musician. They help us so we can minister to God in worship. And we, right now, see that we minister to all the believers by praying. And as I share this word, we minister to each other. And Right now, there's a group of women working in the kitchen on the other side 
uh, of our property in our COC kitchen. See, so they're working, they're cooking, they prepped yesterday, and this morning, right now, they do the work uh, that about to serve about 250 people uh, in our uh, fellowship meal. And you see that everybody can come together and minister. And the third direction that we minister is to the unbeliever. Because God called us. Jesus told us that we are the salt of the earth and we are the light of the world. As we walk in our everyday life, we witness, we let our light shine, we let our saltiness impact into our community and to other people's life. That's the three directions that we minister in. And the third thing is we minister in three areas of needs. Human being, we have our spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. And as minister, we minister to people physical need. There is a legitimate ministry. And God say in Matthew 25, verse 35, 36, and 40, I was hungry, and you feed me, thirsty, and you give me drink. I need clothes, and you clothe me sick and you care for me, in prison and you visit me. Whenever you have done this to the least person, you did it for me. Uh, like the ministry that uh, Sister Diane and, and the group are uh, able to minister to is bringing some gift and praise and encouragement to the people who have their children uh, been cared for and received treatment in the medical center. And we see that it's a wonderful thing that they, they do in obedience to what Jesus um, commands us to do. Is uh, when he's sick, we go and visit him and care for him. If, if you back into this scripture, and you see the people after heard Jesus uh, say this thing. They said, but Lord, wherever we see that you're naked to close you, to see you get sick to go and visit you. That's why in verse 40 it said that um, whenever you have done this to the least person, you did this for me. By the way, this is a final exam. But Jesus said, that he will bring each and every one of us in front of him as a people of the family, and he will judge us according to this teaching that he said. That's why ministry that we have here at VBC Houston, and we want to improve it more, is, is care for the needs of the people, the physical needs. Uh, we used to have prison ministry until... Um, they shut us down. We go into the prison. We go to maximum security prison in um, Medicine View. We go there and visit people in there. And um, you know, I, I, I go in place. And uh, the scary thing that you can hear in your life the first time is you hear those iron gate is closed behind you. They round up men in white, to a library. We go in and we sit them, we teach them the word of God. Many get saved and we able to baptize them in there with portable uh, baptistry. A wonderful thing is going on uh, until they change the um, chaplain for that prison. Uh, unfortunately, chaplain is, uh, is have no religion uh, differences. They got in a Muslim uh, chaplain, and he forbid all of the Christian go in and do any work of the ministry in that prison. Um, but we used to have that ministry. And I want to share with you to see as uh, we reach out according to the word of God minister to people of physical need because that is what God teaching us. And for those of you 
uh, who are a Sunday school teacher, even if you take a little child to a restroom, you will be rewarded. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 42, if, as my representative, you give even a cup of cold water to a little child, you will surely be rewarded. You see, water, a cup of water is free, it's from the Lord. But the act that you, you get a cup, you fill it with water, and you walk, and you give a little child a drink, God noted that act, and he will reward you for that. And this is important for us to remember that. There is um, the final exam that God wants uh, us to be prepared for, and I want to prepare you for that. It's not, um, I don't see that it, it's nothing else, but God looked out and see that we willing to help people around us. We minister to people emotional need. People have different kind of emotional need, and the Bible say it's like different kind of ministry. By the way, I wanted to share with you, this is a wonderful thing, and it's confirmed with us by Dr. Min. Uh, he is one of our uh, new members, came to BBC recently. I said now the medical community, they work into the um, doctor uh, screening, the question to help us discover a big need that is surfaced in our 21st century lifestyle. It's loneliness and depression. So it's not surprise you when you go and see a doctor and they ask something like, did you sleep well? Did you you feel lost appetite lately? Um, is your relationship with people around you is good? So it's a question they, they want to use um, and work in for a doctor to screen these um, individuals. And they are the first detective to discover that. But I, I share with, uh, with, with Dr. Min, and they say, but a Christian is supposed to do that as we walk in this life, in school, with our fellow students, as we work in our company. We need to look in for and help the people who are lonely, the people who have problems, and the people who are depressed. Because that's a terrible thing when they get into it's so deep that it's very difficult to take them out. Of that place. The scripture tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14, warn the idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with all. So we respond to different people in different ways. And when you minister a word of counsel or encouragement or comfort, that is ministry. I overheard conversation uh, from the report from, uh, from Paul and Julianne. That's a simple church that they leading have to do a wonderful work. And, and I applaud all of you in that uh, simple church. Give up the good work. Your word of encouragement, your word of testimony is bringing encouragement to other people, and that is ministry. That is what we we're looking for that you guys able to extend the, the hand of service deep into our community. I'm looking forward to hear uh, what's going on in Laporte, what's going on to, um, in um, uh, the symbol church in the south, and looking forward that we will uh, plan many more symbol church all over the city of Houston because that is where VBC Houston is. It's not a location. It's not 6100 Richmond Street, but it's everywhere. VBC Earth, live, work, travel to, be at, live there. It's where we minister to people in our community. And that leads to the third, is to people spiritual need. God wants us to minister to their spiritual need, and we... Um, 
are equipped for that. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. God reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Wow, this is a powerful picture here that we see. Reconciliation is when you take two opposed parties and you bring them together. You see, the people, before they, 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 they come back to God, the Scripture tells us they live a lifestyle uh, as an enemy of God. But it's not like that in the beginning because God created us so He can love on us and we can love Him back. But because of sin, because of pride, people walk and live far away from God. Instead, they, they live anti-God. But we as the people who have been reconciled to God Himself first. God called us and turned us into reconciliation people that we can help other people can come to God and be restored. So we can proclaim Christ. So we can minister to people and bring them into the kingdom of God. What is the purpose of our ministry? First Corinthians tells us that um, there's many different kinds of service to God we have been, as have been described to you. And it's like different gifts, different ability to do that work. And the Holy Spirit, He gives different gifts, different ability, uh, supernatural ability, so we can minister to God, to other fellow believers, and to the unbelievers out there to help them come into the kingdom of God. And it takes special gift, special ability for us to do that. And it's important for us to discover that. That's why we have Grow Track, and we encourage you, um, those who are not involved uh, in Grow in Grow Track yet, you have to do that in order for you to get help and be equipped to discover wonderful thing that you have come full loaded when you are born again and God have put into your life. You need to take it out and use it and minister to people. Okay, that's ministry. Ministry is when you use what God has given you to minister to other people and live out um, the life that God has ordained you uh, to live. That is we a wonderful thing for us to discover. You will be fruitful. You will feel fulfilled when you're able to discover who you are, what you can do, how you can give, and what you can give, what you can uh, contribute into this uh, church and to mankind. Your life will be so purposeful that you look forward uh, to wake up in the morning and fulfill that work. It's a wonderful life to live. You may ask, uh, Pastor, is this really from the Word of God? Or you just want us to, um, to work and, and make VBC Houston grow? Uh, let's walk through the Word of God. They say, I want to, you to, to see from the Word of God that you're special God has a special calling for your life. You are the minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. And my goal is to help you be equipped. Because God wants you to be equipped. Ten foundation truth. First, I've been created for ministry. When you're able to say that out loud and... Uh, be proud about it. That I have been created for ministry. Ephesians 2.10. 2, uh, 2, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. 
You are the masterpiece. So don't let society and people and circumstance tell you otherwise. You know, people, many people, they walk in pain of rejection. And they put themselves, um, they feel guilty because they think that they um, they're not good enough. They have no ability. They walk around and um, don't have any real purpose in life. But we as Christians, we need to remind them, to help them. And we need to remind ourselves that we have been created for ministry. Next time, when you see somebody who lost hope for life, give them hope. Give them a wonderful picture that they have been created for ministry. Many of them were surprised. I remember one young man came to uh, our building here. He come and, and tell me, he says, Pastor, um, I need some money from you. And he helped. And he have a notion the pastor make a lot of money. So I talked to him, and after a while, I feel impressed, lead by God to say, hey, I want to let you know that you have been created for ministry. He said, really? How do you see it? And I said, well, you have a lot of potential you can release and be a blessing to many people. He said, Really? And I'm able to walk him through the, uh, the teaching that I have uh, shared with you right now. His life is turned around. The next time I see him, he walk upright, uh, look at me and say, Pastor, thank you for sharing those words that have lived me and my life. Uh, never be the same since that day. We have been created for ministry. We are the masterpiece that God created for the good work that he had prepared beforehand for us. The second foundation is we've been saved for ministry. So the minute you get saved, you are saved for ministry. Second Timothy 1.9 said in the Living Bible, It is he who saved us and chose us for his holy work, not because we deserve it, but because that was his plan long before the world began. In God's mind, you need to be saved, not just so you can be a Christian in a local church. You have been saved and called into ministry. Wow. That's helped us to see that we have an important place in the kingdom of God. The third thing is, we've been called into the ministry. Galatians 1.15 said, God in His grace chose me even before I was born and called me to serve Him. Wow, before you are born, God already see you. He chosen you before you are born. wonder why the day that we discover the gospel, hear the gospel, and discover the grace of God, everything is clicked. I have people who come and share with me and say, Pastor, wonderful, sin, I accept Christ to be my Savior. I went home that night, I slept so well, and when I wake up in the morning, I heard the birds singing beautifully. I see the sunlight is so bright. I look out the window. I see the tree, the leaf is green, and everything is, is changed. And I look over and see my wife. See, beautiful. Wow. Everything is changed. Everything is clicked. Everything is come in place because before we are born, God already chosen us. So we are called into the ministry. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, when you have been chosen by God himself, 
You are priests of the king. You are God's very own. All this so that you may show to others how God called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. Once you were less than nothing, now you are God's own. Wonderful picture for us. You see. We used to be close to nothing. We're just a big zero. In fact, big many zero. And then when God add in his number one into your life, he bring himself into your life, suddenly you become ten, a hundred, a thousand, a hundred, a thousand, and a million. Uh, from nothing now you are very valuable because God bring life into your life. He been called you into the ministry. Very important for us to remember that. Somebody said, we need to watch out the way that we look at ourselves and see ourselves. We need to remember that I am not who I think I am. So many people live with that notion and it's just like a myth that they try to live. I'm not who you think I am. Many people, they live and try to fulfill what people think they are. But I really am who God say I am. Your values is in what God said about you. Praise God. The fourth thing is, I've been gifted for ministry. If you're born again, God has given you supernatural ability already. It's about to be activated so you can minister. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. God has given each of you some special ability. Be sure to use them to help each other, passing on to other God's many kinds of blessings. We need to discover what God already given to us. And it's important for us to recognize that. Just imagine when you buy a car, you have a lot of feature in there that you don't know, you don't know how to use it. But as soon as you discover, you say, oh, it's wonderful. I remember when my wife bought a car. This is the car that she drives right now. It's used, but to us, it's, it's, it's new, new car for us. Old for somebody, but new car for us. And we try to get to know that car. And we sit in, and we look at the dashboard, and we say, hmm, we don't have a glove compartment. We try to look in for the, 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 the manual. We say, where? This car, glove compartment. Because we're looking for something that we use with all the vehicle that we own. At least you have a place, a latch that you will open it up. So where is it? Look, five minutes later, you know, on the console, we say, mm, it's not there. Is there an, a button that we can push and it will open for us? We didn't see. Until it's happened to be, I look up and they say, oh, this, this, this is where the glove compartment is supposed to be. And they push the dashboard, and suddenly the door is open for me. They say, oh, it's here. You know, part of the time when they're looking for and they say, man, they designed the car very fancy, but they, they took away the club compartment. Then realize it is, is always there waiting to be discovered. And in the same way, my brother and sister, God already loaded you with a lot of wonderful things. It's your job to discover. And it's my job and the leadership in the church is to help you discover your gift, your ability. So do yourself a favor. If you're not enrolled in Grow Track yet, you need to go that next step because 
You need that in order for you to be on your way to be a wonderful minister for the Lord Jesus Christ. The fifth thing is we've been authorized for ministry. And this is a big thing for me. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. He said, all authority have given back to him. You see, when Jesus, he is God incarnate into a human being, where this earth stood, walk among us, he had boxed his authority, his divine nature, in the box I call of obedience. He do nothing if he not see what God the Father doing. He say nothing if he not hear what the Father is saying. So he can be a perfect savior for us. Prepare a body to give up as a sacrifice on the cross and on the way to the cross to restore everything that is lost in the garden when mankind sinned. But that day, when he paid for our sin, paid for our health, and everything that is needed, after he said it is finished, he gave up his spirit. And the scripture tells us they bury him in the tomb. And on the third day, he resurrected. He walked among his disciples and took many things to prove that he is alive. And before he took up to heaven, he authorized them by saying, All authority in heaven and earth, or they give it to me. Now, therefore, or now, I send you go out in that authority. You are now authorized on my behalf. Do business, sign contract, and take care of things before he will take up in heaven. Remind yourself that you have been authorized for ministry. Many times when I uh, help set people free. You see, freedom, deliverance, most of the time is through teaching like this to help people get out of the bondage, the stronghold that they have in their mind. Sometimes you have to cast the demon out. And many times when I cast the demon out, sometimes the demon inside that individual, in the victim, look at me and say, who do you think you are? Now they talk when their eyes is rolled back. You just see the white part only. If people don't have the knowledge and understand that they are authorized for ministry, they may took off and run. But I shout back and say, I'm a son of God. I'm the minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get out in the name of Jesus. And they say, okay, we know. Just checking. And they go. I want to encourage you to recognize that you are authorized for ministry. Does that help anybody? Praise God. Number six, I'm commanded to minister. God has commanded for us that we need to go out and minister. We need to step up to minister to other people. And it's important for us to remember that. And when he commands we have to obey. Praise God. Because he said that we have to take on the same attitude that he had. For the Son of Man come not to be served, but to serve. He called us and commanded us to minister to people. Number seven, I'm to be prepared or equipped for ministry. It's so already the raw talent, the raw gift already in you. It's time for you to be equipped, take it out, and use it for the good of the body of Christ. Back to our scripture, Ephesians 4, 11, 12. 
God gave apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher to prepare God's people for the work of the ministry so that the body of Christ may be built up. Next time, would you have something inside of you say otherwise? Remind yourself that the church need me just as I need the church. Because the body of Christ may be built up by the gift, by the ministry that God has given to you. You are not something or somebody insignificant. You are significant in the kingdom of God. And here at VBC Houston, you shall give well, step into the ministry, and allow God to bless people through you and through your life. Number eight, the body of Christ needs my ministry. The peace that you bring, the piece of pie that you bring, you make the pie whole. Just imagine in this life, many people who withhold from the world the wonderful thing that they can bring. For the convenience of the, the iPhone, the iPad, I wonder if Steve Jobs bring iPhone and iPad and iPod, all of that, to the grave with him, the world missing a big thing. And whoever you think that this has been a blessing, addition, their contribution to mankind, just imagine that if they would hold that. What a miss. What a miss. May God help us. Step up and minister. There's a pastor that I uh, learned so much from him. Dr. Mao Monroe. He have a motto for his life. He went to, when he died, in his tombstone, he said, die empty. And when I heard that, I say, people may misunderstand that you, you die with empty hand, have nothing. But as I think about it, this man determined that he will give everything that he can give serve all the way that he can serve so when he die there's no regret he wants to die empty and when i understood what he mean i want to do the same i wanted to uh, when i die people will look at my tombstone if the lord jesus christ is not returned and i'm go before some of you you will look at and you say, Pastor Conwin died empty. Because he gave everything that he can give. And every day when I wake up, I ask the Lord, Lord, bless me and help me. Every time I pray with my wife and say, Lord, help me, bless me, anoint me, so I can be a blessing. Whatever I can do, whatever I can give, I can give to the max to help other people because I want to die empty. I don't want to carry anything with me. I want unloaded everything that God has loaded in my life to help other people and minister to people. Number nine, I'm accountable for ministry. And this is the thing that one day I have to stand before the Lord and answer for your life. Part of my calling is to stand before God 
say, what did I do with the people that God has blessed and bring into BBC Houston? But each and every one of us is a soul responsible before God because we have to give an account of our life. Romans 14, 12 says, So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. There are many, many parables in the Bible tell us about we have to give an account of our life. Like the parable of the talent. The master will call the servant who have been trusted with different amounts of talent. And they have to give an account of what they use it for or not use it for. Number 10, I will be rewarded for ministry. I always said, even a cup of water, if you give it to the baby, a child, you will be rewarded for that. Very important for you to remember that. But God will reward for your ministry. Because one day, Pastor John already penned for us a picture because God has revealed to him the future scene in heaven. And we will stand before our Savior, the one who have died, given his life for all of us to live. But one day, all of us will stand before him and give an account of a new life, a second life, a second change that God gave it to us. What are we doing with it? May God help us to discover our ministry and step up and allow God to use us to be a blessing to other people, to thousands upon thousands of people. Humbly, every day, when I think about the distance that this ministry, Houston, BBC Houston, have reached. So God many times, Lord, I'm not worthy to be used in this way. Be reminded. That is He that worked through me. Deserve all the glory. Not us. We're just a vessel. I've been loaded with a supernatural ability certain personality, temperament, experience that God wants us to put all together to see the ministry that God wants us to minister to people. It's about time for us to activate our gift. It's already there. Just like that club compartment in my wife's car. It's, it's, it's been there. But we don't know how to get it to it. Until accidentally I touch the dashboard at the right place and it's open. And I pray that today this message will encourage you to discover, to activate the gift that God gave it to you. And step up serve. Step up and minister. For you are the minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. My goal and VBC Houston goal is one day when people walk in and say, can I see the pastor? Everybody will and say, which one? Because there is one as minister but all of us here in this place is minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can talk to any of us because we are ministers in this house.
That's my dream and my vision. And everything that we have in this place is geared toward that. I invite you to join the journey and discover the place that God has saved you for, called you for, gifted you for, authorized you so you can do what He has ordained for you to do. Would you stand with me as we pray? And ask God to activate the gift, the ability that He has brought into our life. May I say again, you come full loaded before time, what we call time, before the creation. God already knew you have a wonderful place for you in his church in his family and in this blended earth you need to discover that and step in fulfill what God have called you and equipped you to do pray right now ask God to activate for you to be able to do that and if you need someone to pray with you the pastor is ready to minister to you. For those of you who say, Pastor, I'm not saved yet. You will be saved today. Because you recognize that you need to get saved and able to step in to the wonderful life that God has envisioned for you. And if you want to make that decision today, come to one of the pastors and express your desire. They will lead you and help you to accept Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. And everything that I'm talking about begin to click, begin to activate in your life. Father, we thank you for this morning. But way before time that we know, before creation, you've known us, you have called us. Because you see and you know everything will happen. You even see this day, this morning. That you have saved us and called us and equipped us and authorize us so we can be equipped and ready to make a difference in this planet Earth, in this city, in this community, in this church body. We praise you and we magnify you. I ask right now, Lord, through the understanding that you will activate or the gift, the supernatural ability that the Holy Spirit gives to each and every one of us for the building up of the body of Christ in this local church and elsewhere. I ask that you come right now, Holy Spirit, and activate the gift and empower us so we can go out and serve we step up to minister to people because we know that we are made for this. Thank you, Lord. I ask that you will continue to teach and lead. Lord, call and draw those of us who are still reluctant to side up the next step, the growth track, so we can be helped and equipped, ready to minister. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your word today. I ask for your blessing upon each and every one in this place, that you will bless them in abundantly, Lord, so each and every one of us can go out and be a blessing to thousands upon thousands of people. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you and be blessed. Come if you need pray. Anything that you need to be prayed for or anyone who desires to make a public confession of faith then come to one of the pastors and we will minister to you. Church, have a good time and enjoy some coffee, donut, fellowship time out there. We will catch up and we will see you later. Amen.